Hello guys, Jagbir Singh back with another video of Mastercam 2022 and in this video I'm just going to continue with the last video where I left on the wireframe which is the 2D wireframe part 1. So let's get started. So as we know in last video we just made the wireframe of the part itself and which was right here which we took from the internet source randomly and now I'm just going to continue uh, doing the machining of it and show you two different ways of how would I personally will do the machining on it so in general if you want there are some companies that will just use the wireframe itself to make the tool paths whereas you can also use certain features like uh, extrusion extrusion of solid within the master cam to make it more visualization and to make it easier for other people to understand how and why those parameters make sense in real life. In the drawing that we picked up, we don't have any dimension for the thickness because it's all 2D. So I'm just going to assume that we have a certain thickness, let's say 5 inches for this part. And how will we do the machining for this particular part, having those parameters in our mind. So first of all, we have the wireframe ready. So the first way I'm going to teach is using the solid and then later on I will show you how we can just use the wireframe to make the tool paths. So we already have the wireframe so I will go to the solids and click on extrude. So now it will ask me to select the chain. So I want the whole outside chain and I also don't want to have the circle so I'm going to select both of them click OK. So now the direction is important. I need to make sure it goes the other way. So I'm going to flip direction which is right here. Reverse. And I'm going to click 5 inches. So that's the thickness of the part that I'm assuming it, it to have. So right here we can see that we got the desired solid that the part will actually look like. So this is the final product that we are expecting to be machining at the end of the day. And also, one thing to be particular with sharp edges is not any CNC is capable of making perfect sharp edges. I will repeat that again that no CNC machine or I would say no mill CNC machine is capable of making perfect sharp corners. So in this case we have perfect 90 degrees. No tool will ever be able to cut a perfect right angle. The reason is because the tools are circular in shape which means that they already have a radius on them because of which when, whenever they are going to cut they are going to leave a small radius behind it which is called tool nose radius. It can depend on tool to tool but there will be a small curvature left no matter what or how, how hard you try to get the perfection. But there are some uh, machines like EDM which is electric discharge method machines which you can definitely use which use wires instead of a proper end mill or other tools to get rid of the sharp corners and to have perfect 90 degrees. Well this is just to let you guys know for general knowledge because it makes the machining more practical in approach. So now because I have the solid so now the next thing I can do is I can um, make sure that all the wireframe all the setup is properly done because this is a mill part I'm going to go to machine and mill default so I brought in the machine group one with properties and all I will extend that and now we have the file option we click on file so now I'm not going to change any parameters because it will be according to your organization or individual use. Tool settings, you, you can enter your program number. I'm just going to write 1111. So here we have option for feed calculation. You can choose it from tool if you already know that if there is, there is a specification of tools that your organization or you individually follow, then you go for from tool or if you are not sure about anything so you, you can simply click from material from defaults and user defined I've never personally used it so from material will 
let Mastercam know that as a user you are not sure about what are the feeds and speeds that are perfect for any particular material so what you are going to do is Mastercam is going to give you some feed and speeds which Mastercam thing is ideal for cutting any particular material it can be aluminum it can be wood it can be stainless steel or whatsoever and they're going to vary according to the material that you choose so you're going to click on assign tool number warning or duplicate use tool step I generally don't uh, choose search tool library when entering a tool number because it have repetitive uh, problems when you're going to do the machining so overrides check check mark all of them because we need us uh, clearance side we also need retract height and also the feed plane I will tell you what exactly all these are in new uh, in the future videos material I'm just going to choose what I can generally uh, use is uh, aluminum 6060 one and stocks adhesive is a really important thing here so again there are different ways of choosing stock you can use a bounding box you can simply click on the bounding box click on the surface itself click enter and it will create the maximum size of that shape so in this case if you remember in last video we made a wireframe using a rectangle so it's making a rectangle in general it's going to make a rectangle for almost all the shapes but uh, the best part about it is that we don't need to specify any, any dimension it's, just, it's going to assume the, all the dimension that you have so now you can just simply click OK and that's going to be working as a stock just make sure to check mark display option sometimes it's not by default selected and it can show some uh, so it's not going to show the bounding box or the stock itself so you can simply click OK so now you can see that there is a red color bounding box which is the stock itself a representation of the stock that you can see in red dotted lines which is going to be a raw, raw stock material from which we are going to machine down to this particular dimension I would also like to add one more thing that generally we keep the Z to have certain value for the face facing operation I try to keep around like 20 thou just for the sake that I just want to make sure that I have a little bit extra material to cut off to have a better finish on top of my part so that I don't need to uh, so that I don't have a bad looking part as an end result I'm going to add like about like I can just take whatever the amount that I want to so I'm just going to enter 6 inches instead of 5 on the Z value and the X value also I'm going to install instead of 270 I'm going to write 275 and Y Y 65 and I'm going to keep 0 0 and 0 0.02 okay this is not what we are looking for I think Z X value is supposed to be negative 15 everything else looks good so there we are and here we have so now we can go to the top view if we want or the front view itself and make sure that we have some distance if we zoom in very very much because the part is very big don't forget about it so this part is around like 250 inches so that's why 20,000 seems very less but still is good enough for a normal size part if we will be machining in future so that's pretty much it for this video in next video I will show you what tool paths will I be using in order to cut this part thank you and don't forget to subscribe my channel